programs. It has, uh, it's been a while. Gonna, gonna not <laughs> really dwell on that. Things are better. I'm glad to be back. Let's have some fun. So today, we're going to go ahead and look at something I've wanted to look at for quite some time now, and I'm really, really glad to finally get around to it. We're looking at the NECA King Kong. And um, this thing is absolutely spectacular. I am completely blown away with this thing. Right off the bat, you can see... Not only a really, really great paint job with, you know, lots of just subtle textures and I'm pretty sure there's a wash to give the fur even, you know, like further depth here. But you'll notice like here on the side of his face and around his teeth and especially his eyes up here. Uh, we're going to better get some reflection there so you can see. Uh, yeah, they used glossy paint in different areas to help, like, make the things that would be shiny or, you know, uh, wet, <laughs> shall we say, you know, look like they should. And that is incredible. I, I, I like, just, just off the bat, looking at this thing, holy cow, like, th this is some smart use of paint. I'm honestly impressed as someone who, you know, at least for a while painted a lot of D&D &D miniatures. Uh, hopefully you don't hear all this rattling that's going on right now. Here, we'll, we'll uh, see if that fixes it. <laughs> the joys of being rusty at this kind of thing. But yeah, off the bat, cannot praise the paintwork enough. The molding is incredible. Excellent, excellent fur texture all over this guy. Um, wow, I wish I knew what was causing that rattle. That was driving me off the wall. Um, and I'm distracting myself really badly. We're doing this live. We're keeping this all in. It's good to be back. Y'all are going to be so annoyed that I'm back. Um, so... Posability on this guy is fantastic. Uh, everything about this guy is fantastic. So, the head is actually mounted on a double ball joint, which you'll see a little bit better later. Um, the posability on it is, you know, somewhat limited, but you can see, like, there's kind of two hinges at play here. Uh, let's be fair, gorillas don't have the most, you know motion in their heads so that is you know that is an accurate thing i'm going to try moving the camera back a little bit more see if i can get rid of that rattle that is driving me nuts uh, something else is causing the rattle apparently oh well um so yeah you've got a okay we're, we're pausing to figure out what's causing this okay <laughs> the rattle has been squelched yay <laughs> um where was I? Posability, yes. Um, head is on that double ball joint. You, you'll see that a little bit better here in a moment. Um, shoulders are on... Not really a... It's not really ratchet, but there are a few stopping points you'll hit. Um, it's a very tight joint. Only goes out about that far. And again, you know, thinking about what you know he is, these are very acceptable limitations. Um, you can rotate the shoulder all the way around. Got a rotation here at the bicep. There is a double jointed elbow. So you can straighten his arm out all the way. Bring it in. Um, he does have multiple hands, but all the hands are, you know, the same. Get a bit of back and forth in the wrist here. You can see the joint right in there, as well as a rotation. Uh, the fur around spots like this, you can see it kind of comes out and around. Um, it is slightly soft in those areas so that, you know, it doesn't just break if you put a little tension on it, which is appreciated. I'm guessing it is another double ball joint here. 
in his torso. As you can see, you know, you can rear back, you can lean down and forward. A um, little bit weird kind of molding here on the back on that spot, but most ways you pose him, you don't really see it. And I think when a I'm not sure, but I think when a gorilla is hunched over like this, this extra kind of lump in the back is technically correct, actually. I'm not sure on that part, but really, really good range. Um, this is slightly soft around here to kind of, you know, help keep things from getting too broken up. Nice fading paint here to help this not break up you know, the color so much and be too jarring. Um, the camera makes it look a lot harsher than it is in person. In person, this is actually very, very smooth. Um, there is actually a ratchet for the forward and back in the legs. And again, the uh, cheek fur here is, you know, this is actually the softest rubber, so you can really see this move. Or soft, pretty sure it's actually a plastic, not a rubber, but... You know, th there's a lot of motion in it to help it, you know, allow for movement in the front, too. Um, again, not, you know, not the most posability, but actually pretty good. Um, it's a universal joint, so it also moves out, which is also ratcheted. Not as stiffly ratcheted, but still ratcheted. Um, there is a little rotation here at both sides of the knee, though you're mostly going to get that out of the lower, you know, kind of shin joint. The knees are double jointed, so they go from completely straight to a little bit past 90 degrees. Got a uh, kind of a weird angled joint here on the foot. I say as I try to uh, make it so I can actually see, my hair is in the way. Um, so as you use the ankle rotation, it will kind of pivot things as well. So it, it's like it's a rotation and a pivot at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, obviously, it is a universal, so it also can just move you know, down and forward. That, mo that movement is very, very limited, as well as incredibly tight on mine, and I'm not... Too keen on forcing this guy. But anyone who's bought these uh, NECA monster figures knows. Um, yeah, they do have some pretty pretty tight joints out of the box. And so you will have to manhandle them a little bit. Get things broken free. And um, yeah, like I said, this guy does come with a lot of stuff. So, first things is he actually comes with two more figures. First, you get a... Pretty sure they specifically call this a Pteranodon. See if I can keep it uh, keep it lit. Uh, paint is not nearly as good, but this is a glorified accessory. Little bits of blue are a nice touch. They're weird how they're so, like, randomly and sloppily done, but it's a nice touch. Um... He does have uh, posability in the head, so you can, you know, move it around. It is a universal joint, not a uh, um, ball joint. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. You can actually see it down there. And then the uh, mouth is also on a universal joint, so you can, you know, break its jaw a little bit if you want to and stuff. Or just have it that break its jaw that way. <laughs> um, but you get that. You also get, uh, I can't remember what they called this thing, but you get this thing, and it's pretty neat. Um, I believe this head is on a ball joint, I'm not fully sure, but you get, you know, a bit of, a bit of posability on it, rotation, again, you can open the mouth, this thing is, this thing's a little bit better painted, and it does, uh, it uses the glossy plastic, uh, glossy paint in a few areas to sort of you know help make things have that realistic shine that they would here and there. 
nice bit of texturing on it too. So, uh, uh, as usual, on screen, if I can find it, that's that's what they call this thing. No posability otherwise, just the head. Then he does come with a pair of open, kind of graspy hands. Um, kind of standard fare here. Just go ahead, rip off the hand. See the hole down in there? Just go ahead, pop that on. You can have him, you know, start swatting at planes and stuff. And, and that's one thing to say. This is probably the easiest to pose figure I've ever dealt with. And for anyone who's not sure what I mean by that, anyone who's, you know, collects figures to some degree knows that it's, it can be hard to pose a figure to where it looks, you know, where it looks good. I find it very, very easy to make this guy look good and, you know, somewhat natural. He's sculpted and articulated in such a way that while it doesn't always show the best on camera because, you know, hey, camera's taking a 3D thing and mashing it down into 2D. In person, if you've got this guy around, it takes almost no effort to pose him and make him look awesome, which I love. But yeah, he's got grabby hands for, you know, both sides. Obviously, fists, as well as a um, traditional pair of holdy hands. And uh, all the hands have the same, like, really, really great molded detail. So I'm not going to, you know, bore you with going over that. But yeah, you know, you got the little finger knuckle wrinkles and the nails and everything. Looks really good. And so what the holdy hands are for is you can have him hold on to, you know... The other creatures <laughs> somewhat. It, it doesn't work the best always, but you know you can you can fuss with it. And, you know, get these things in his hand, and he'll hold on to them. I'm terrified to try to have him hold the pteranodon by the neck because uh, I'm pretty sure I'll damage something in the process of doing that. And I can't get this to like just can't get the head to just pop off. To slip the hand on otherwise. But you also get a stick. I want to say they call this a tree trunk in the list of accessories, but it's 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 a it's a stick. It's a King Kong King Kong size stick. Um shockingly <laughs> nice paint on it. It's very subtle, but there's just enough color difference. A differentiation to you know really separate the bark from the inner wood of the tree it's it's a nice touch there's a slight wash on it to give it a little more you know bring the texture out a little bit it's not super textured I honestly would have liked the bark texture to be a little bit deeper cut still perfectly acceptable though not bad at all and finally, we will violently rip off his head and make all of the Team Godzilla fandom uh, very happy. And here you can see there's like a large ball joint down here in the bottom of the neck. And then there's a smaller one up here, which is what the head itself actually mounts on. And we will put his, uh, his alternate head on, which I believe this is actually what comes pre-installed when you get him. Uh, that can be quite a pop. Um, yeah, this is his happy face, his nice face. And uh, this one actually has an articulated mouth, even. <laughs> he looks so silly with this one. But I am okay with it. Like, you know, anyone who's seen basically any King Kong movie... You know, Kong is not a monster, per se. He's actually intelligent. He can be nice. And when you make Kong nice, he gets some kind of really, really goofy grin on his face. I love that touch. It's so nice that he's got this option. Uh, you can really see just how 
like those eyes are just alive. It is so impressive, especially in person. It looks it, it almost looks worrying at times. Like they are so well done. So um really quick here just to uh because I'm not sure I'm sure someone will want to know he's not quite in scale with your uh your various NECA Godzillas. Though to be fair, I do have this Godzilla in a little bit of an A stance. Let me try to get him to stand up a little bit straighter and godlier, zilla -e er But he, he's still like a full inch shorter than King Kong. Um, other Godzilla figures might be taller. I, I had Burning Godzilla nearby. I only own Burning Godzilla and Shin Godzilla. But, you know, not, not the most off things. I'm sure that there's some other Godzillas that are a little little bit taller to be more in scale. But either way, um, yeah, this is an absolutely awesome, awesome figure. If you are a fan of King Kong to any degree, um, I cannot recommend this enough. Like, I, I, again, the the paint, the sculpting, the posability, the the options of head of hands, the the <laughs> the mouth. He's so good. Uh, worth mentioning, he does also have little uh, peg holes in his feet for uh, figure stands if you need. So while I'm clearly here uh, having a little bit of issue getting him to stand, mostly done caused by the fact that he's literally at arm's reach for me right now. My my arms can't actually touch the back of this thing. Uh yeah, you know, he he is he's very easy to pose. He's really easy to work with and just have so much fun with. So huge huge recommendation to this figure if you have any interest in a King Kong figure. So that said, as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.